what is the cost of load shedding? Spread the fire, welcome back to SMWX. And if you're new around here, on this channel, we explore South African politics through interviews and analysis. SMWX stands for the Sizwe Mbofu Walsh Experience. I'm Dr. Sizwe Mbofu Walsh, your guide in SMWX. And in this video today, I wanna to talk about the cost of load shedding, AKA rolling blackouts, AKA South Africa's power crisis in more senses than one. Because it's become so normal to experience these rolling blackouts over these last 14 years, especially these last 14 months and these last 14 days that in many ways we have become numb to the true consequences and in many ways that lets politicians, administrators who are responsible for the situation off the hook. And I want to speak about the cost because of course we experience load shedding in our own homes, workplaces, but there's really a national crisis going on and we really need to get a sense of that picture so that we can understand the scale of the crisis and therefore understand how urgent it is that we can get ourselves out of this crisis. So I wanna talk about the economic costs of load shedding, the political costs of load shedding and the social costs of load shedding. So let's talk about the economic costs of load shedding. Now there have been a number of studies which have looked into this and the figures are really quite staggering. So at the first level of understanding the economic cost, we could see, well, what do some of the estimates say about how much this costs the economy? And you'll be staggered to hear that when we get into things like stage four and stage six of load shedding, we're really starting to look at uh, a potential of 120 billion lost to load shedding in any given year where there's a great deal of stage four and stage six. This has been brought down to the daily level. This has been brought up to the monthly level. But let's, let's put in perspective and remember this is a very conservative estimate because it could be more than 120 billion. The upper bound is around 300 billion and there are lots of different estimates but let's put this into perspective. Free education in South Africa last year in 2021, according to the Minister for Higher Education, cost us 43 billion. That's the funding that we give to all the students who are currently on free education in South Africa. 43 billion. So we could basically do that three times over when we look at the cost of load shedding. In other words, if we didn't have this cost, we would be able to do things like free education three times over in just one year. But look, these economic analyses are only one layer of the depth of the cost economically of load shedding. Because ultimately load shedding is also about how much the economy loses that it could have produced. And so when we look at the amount of growth, growth uh, gross domestic product that South Africa has lost to this, some of the estimates are around 1% to 2% a year. Now imagine that built up over 14 years or 10 years give or take that load shedding wasn't around in some years, it was worse in others. We could be talking about somewhere between 10 to 25% of our economy. So we could have had a 10% bigger economy or a 25% bigger economy, depending on what estimates you look at. And that could have produced anywhere between, according to some estimates, 500,000 to a million jobs. But the deeper, understanding of the economic cost of load shedding is the spiral it creates. Because in order to get out of load shedding, you need economic growth and you need income. But you can't get income if you have load shedding. So the very problem of load shedding or rolling blackouts plunges the economy into a crisis where we get less revenue because of the blackouts. And because we have less revenue, the blackouts become more likely. And because the blackouts become more likely, we get less revenue. Think of the crisis for ESCOM. ESCOM needs money in order to keep running. It's in a 400 billion uh, rand debt 
pole. But in order to keep running, ESCOM needs to provide electricity, because if it doesn't provide electricity, it can't get the revenue it needs. So ultimately, we're in this economic spiral where we can't get out of load shedding because of the low growth environment that load shedding spurs, but the low growth environment that load shedding spurs can't get us out of load shedding. And so until we break free of the shackles of this economic constraint, the economy is constantly moving towards a death spiral. And that is the true economic cost of load shedding. But that's not all, because there are also political costs that we need to bear in mind. So I think one of the interesting features of load shedding is that it may well be the undoing of the ANC, the party that has led South Africa for nearly three decades now. Now, I have a confession to make. I used to be a very staunch ANC supporter. You would find me in the early days of ANC Live supporting. Yes, I know your eyes are popping out because you know how critical I am of the government. But I was even a part of the Youth League once upon a time. But the truth of the matter is that you can track the political decline of the ANC along with load shedding. Because if you can't deliver electricity, you can't deliver all the services that rely on electricity from water to healthcare, to education, to transport, to sanitation. And so one of the main political costs, or consequences at least, of load shedding is that it may well be the death knell for ANC dominance in South Africa. And this may be a cost that one is willing to pay because only a near political total realignment, in my view, is going to be capable of getting ESCOM out of the, the disasters it's in, getting ed energy policy onto a new trajectory, breaking free from the inertia of three decades of ANC governance. We need total policy overhauls. We need all new people at the helm of not just ESCOM, but the ministries to which ESCOM is adjacent, and indeed the presidency, which has an overarching view of the South African economy. And we're going to get a unique opportunity in 2024 for a potential political rupture that can spur great policy change. But, of course, it can also go in the wrong direction. One of the great political consequences then of load shedding is the death, potentially, of the ANC. What we replace it with is one of the constant themes on this channel, and I'd urge you to look at some of the other videos that we've done about alternatives and new political futures for the country. But I think that's one of the main political outcomes that we need to consider, that load shedding will fundamentally change not just our economy, but our political life for decades to come. But third, and potentially most importantly, there are load shedding or rolling blackouts or this power crises, social costs. Now, when we look at the question of removing electricity from people in South Africa, it's often presented as if we have had electricity given to us or we have always enjoyed electricity and it's been taken away. And that's true for many South Africans. But the deeper truth is that as late as 2016, 8 million South Africans didn't have electricity in the first place. So in many ways, what load shedding has done is it has not only taken electricity away from South Africans who were able to enjoy it up until it started, but it has also revealed how 8 million South Africans have always been living without electricity, without access to that basic amenity and service. But Maybe even more worryingly, load shedding has not followed an equal pattern. So quite frankly, rich people in South Africa are better able to work around load shedding, get their own energy solutions, solar panels and inverters. And it's not perfect, but it's a much better experience than those who, for whom ESCOM is the only potential source of being able to find, find power in a day. And so the inequalities that we see in the country economically are most starkly revealed when we think about the question of energy. Rolling blackouts are affecting South Africa 
socially because the people who bear the brunt of our country's inequalities also bear the brunt of this power crisis. And I think there's also a question of the effects on society, on mental health, on just the general angst that comes with a society that doesn't know from day to day whether there is a predictable electricity supply. What does that do to our collective psyche? What does that do to our confidence in ourselves, in our country, in our ability to move forward, in our futures, in our presence? I don't think we've even begun to think about the psychological effects of this power crisis on the way we look at ourselves and our country and the way it has changed our expectations for the future. So these are just some brief reflections on the true cost of the power crisis that has been engulfing South Africa. It's important for us to remember these crises, remember their effects, because only once we appreciate how deep the problem is, can we understand how urgent it is that we need new solutions, new futures, new alternatives, new leaders, new formations, new parties, new thinking to get us out of this crisis. Spread the fire, drop a like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you for being a part of this SMWX family and we'll see you on the next one. I hear you.